all Spartans, we're two weeks from the launch of Halo 5, probably one of the most anticipated titles since Halo 2 or 3. And to keep the hype real, 343 released the official gameplay launch trailer today. There are a lot of interesting tidbits strewn throughout, and as usual, we're going to break it all down. Also released recently is what people are calling the Halo 5 Believe Campaign, a mini viral campaign where people can watch clips from Halo 5 as Chief and Locke explain in purposely vague terms their motivations. There are some interesting clips in there, so we'll talk about those too. Warning, potential spoilers ahead, and of course, I recommend you watch the original trailer before watching this. With that all out of the way, let's take a look at Halo 5's launch trailer. As always, I have organized the clips and tossed out repeat footage. We start out with some clips of Halsey, back when she had two arms. These are likely part of a flashback sequence, perhaps part of Halo 5's prologue, assuming it has one. Now, having watched this a few times, I'm fairly certain this is Castle Base on Reach. When I posted about this on the Halo Archive, another user pointed out the image of a brain on a screen in the back and took this theory a little further, proposing that this was around the time of the birth of Cortana. Considering the next scene has Halsey standing in front of a mysterious blue glow, I can't help but agree. During these scenes too, we hear an interesting narration from Halsey. She sounds weary, defeated, like she's been through absolute hell. Halsey, speaking to Locke, says that when this is over, Oni will make you kill us both. Ominous. Our final scene with Halsey takes place in 2558 on Infinity, as she's escorted by Spartan Palmer. This is likely the scene we saw being rehearsed in Season 2 of The Sprint. Also during this scene, we hear that Halsey tried to warn the UNSC about the awakening of the Guardians. Remember back in Hunt the Truth Season 2 Episode 1 when Captain Noah told Maya that someone had tried to warn Oni about the attacks, but Oni didn't immediately act because the informant had burned them before? Well, Halsey's line here would seem to confirm the idea that she was the informant in Hunt the Truth. I imagine we'll still have to wait and see to be sure. Moving forward, the next two scenes show infinity over a human world, followed by a huge electromagnetic pulse taking out everything electronic on the planet and even hitting the assets in space. A terrified corporal reports the pulse via Mayday, among various other bits of chatter. So we're likely witnessing the awakening of a Guardian, but the question is, where? Considering we see the infinity alongside orbital Mac platforms, it's pretty easy to assume that this is Earth. However, I'm not so sure. Most likely what we're seeing are the initial attacks on the five UNSC colonies. My guess, this planet may be the one seen in the very first piece of Halo 5 concept art, the same planet featured in the two live action trailers from way earlier this year, The Cost and All Hail. Moving forward, our next scene has Buck asking Locke how he expects to bring in Blue Team. Ask politely. <laughs> oh, Buck. Anyway, the next two scenes come from levels set on Sun Helios. We see Locke talking to the Arbiter, noting that he has the firepower to get us in there referencing the Battle of Sunion. We then have this scene with some sort of energy ball slamming into the table they're standing around, much to the surprise of both Locke and the Arbiter. The trailer itself is cut together to imply that this has to do with the awakening of a Guardian, but if that's actually the case, it's impossible to tell just yet. Our next series of scenes are certainly among the most interesting and feature some of those bonus scenes I mentioned earlier. We see Blue Team exploring this lush green world, taking on some Covenant and later the Warden Eternal. After that, we have Blue Team on some Forerunner site, where they suddenly look up to see a Guardian teleporting in. Fred and Kelly exchange a look of what I could almost classify as concern, and then Fred looks to John. They look at each other for quite a bit longer, and I can't help but feel that there's a bit of tension in the group by now, especially given Fred's concern about John in the Blue Team cinematic. You good? The next scene shows some Covenant forces that got absolutely wrecked, seemingly not by Blue Team. As I'm sure you've noticed by now, the Chief's visor is cracked. Blue Team then approaches another Forerunner relic, and in the next scene, they are confronted by the Warden Eternal. However, they don't shoot, and as the scene goes on, they actually lower their weapons. What did the Warden say to elicit that? I also have to wonder if this takes place before or after the confrontation we saw earlier. Either way, I'm really curious about this thing. Also, on the subject of Blue Team, while this clip here is from the Blue Team cinematic, there's a nice piece of audio about the Chief being called back to Infinity, but telling them no. The next two clips come from later in the first level of the game, I'm guessing when Osiris actually confronts Jewel, followed by some gameplay from that level. We then transition to a Warthog driving on a human colony, seeming to indicate we might get some Warthog run-like area. Well, that's what I got from the scene anyway. We then get some more awesome gameplay on this human world showing off the UNSC conflict with the Promethean forces and showing off some of the awesome weapons and vehicles we can expect to enjoy. Our next scene is one of pure awesome, the Arbiter taking down an enemy elite. Just so badass. 
And then after that we get some Phaeton gameplay, followed by a brief clip of an SOS Sanghili being tackled by a Jackal. Damn, them Ibiishin Jackals be gutsy. We then get a brief scene of Locke taking on a Promethean Knight, and it looks like the Knights have received some serious visual overhauls. Either that or it's a new class. After that we have some footage from the Battle of Sunion. After seeing a Guardian in Sunion, Osiris boards a Pelican, which we saw in a previous trailer, one apparently piloted by Palmer, with her helmet off. I'm sure fans aren't going to say anything about that at all. Anyway, as the Pelican takes some serious hits, Locke and Buck nearly get thrown out. At this point, we get another brilliant exchange between the two Spartans. That's twice. Well, we're counting now? <laughs> I wonder what the first was. Anyway, it gets to a point where Palmer says Osiris needs to jump now or never, and they do. We then get some scenes of Osiris, presumably in the Guardian, trying to find Blue Team. Which they eventually do. Locke finally catches up with Chief and, with his gun at the ready, warns the Chief that this is his one and only chance to come home peacefully. And this is where I'm supposed to laugh at the notion of a Spartan 4 taking on a Spartan 2. While it's true that Locke would likely lose in a 1v1, he is the one holding a gun at the moment. As we near the end, we get a scene with the Chief, visor cracked, and we hear a voiceover saying, I have a job to do. And we'll end with the Arbiter killing a grunt. Fuck yeah. And that's all the new footage and interesting bits from the recent launch trailer, plus extras. There is so much awesome in this trailer, and whether or not you like the inclusion of Knights of Sidonia, it's a damn good watch. For the record, I personally don't care for the inclusion of Muse. I love the song, but I've always preferred Halo trailers that stick to Halo music. But that's me. On the bright side, it at least fits with the theme. One last thing before we go is related to some text that appears in the trailer. The trailer invites us to experience the beginning of the greatest hunt in gaming history. Now we know that what was once the Reclaimer trilogy was upgraded to a saga, basically to allow the story to spread out over many more games. However, it's interesting that the trailer seems to imply that the plot point about the Chief going rogue isn't going to be resolved in this game. How long could the hunt continue, I wonder? Of course, it could also just be marketing jargon. Anyway, that's all for today. Thanks for joining me, and until next time, keep shining. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.